Next up, we're going to take a look at the uh, Romulan fleet. Had a lot of fun with these in the uh, OP events. This is pretty much what I played for the whole Dominion War. As I was waiting for the Dominion to get more and more ships to make them a playable force. Um, and they kind of grew on me. I uh, really like the options they have available. They're a little less straightforward than the Klingons. Use similar tactics though, but are uh, a little more strategic. I uh, need to worry about placement a little more and uh, options play a bigger part. Um, a lot of theirs come down to combos between ship, captain, and other uh, upgrades. And uh, they definitely can hold their own. I never took lower than third throughout the entire six month event and used nothing but Romulans the entire time. So, first off with their ships, they've got a variety of ships. The Dideridex class, which came with the starter set, and then one of the OP prizes was a uh, named version. It's a decent ship, has lots of defense, not so much offense, uh, has some interesting abilities. The one from the starter set, the Kazara, uh, has a cool ability where if you attack when you're cloaked, you get an extra attack die, which makes it a little bit nicer. The one from the OP kit has an ability where every time you take damage to your hull, you can reroll a number of dice equal to the uh, hull damage you currently have each turn. So it requires you to get beat up a little bit, but then gives you a nice bonus. Uh, your science ships are hit or miss. The, um, I'm going to screw up the name, the Praetis in the back there. It's an older version of the ship, has no shielding, and when it cloaks it has a chance of hurting itself. But the thing is a uh, tech boat of a ship, and it's definitely made for packing mines and whatnot. The Galgathong, probably the oldest of the ships in here. Really nice little ship, I like it. Um, uh, the name ship's ability to fire plasma torpedoes without requiring a lock is amazingly good for the Romulans. Then we have our Romulan science vessel, which is hit or miss. Uh, has some really neat upgrades that can only go on that ship or only go on that ship for a decent price. But aside from its special ability, really can't do much. The name version has a cool pulse wave ability that... Uh, hits every ship within range one. The downside is it hits every ship within range one, so it hits all your friendlies too. Uh, the Riz Bow is the one here in the middle in the front. Great little support ship. I use it a lot to ferry uh, Denatra around so she can give my other ships bonuses. It doesn't have much offensive power, has a lot of defensive though. Uh, three evade plus a cloak, you're rolling seven or more dice for defense, so uh, it has some good survivability. Uh, I put flagship on that before to give it the plus one evade. So then you're looking at uh, eight, eight plus defense dice a turn. Possible rerolls depending on some of the upgrades you have. It makes it a really hard ship to kill. But at the same time it doesn't have much of an offensive punch. So it really is only a support ship. So you don't want to dump a lot of points into it. And then this is a hero click that I converted over because it looks really cool. It's a half cloaked. It's a half cloaked version of one of those ships. And um, you can use it to represent it when it's cloaked or whatnot. It's just a neat little ship. Captain-wise, um, the Romulans are mid-range. Uh, you're not going to be winning any captain fights against a um, Klingon or a uh, Federation fleet. I think our highest right now is a 7. They do have the uh, Romulan commander. Who is he the one? Yep. As an action, he can fire her first. Which, you're spending your action and you're getting an auxiliary token for it. So, I don't know if it's really worth it. But, I mean, if you can take out a ship that turn, the ability to fire first is definitely worth it. Um, we got three seven captains. I'm not sure Jirok really is all that great. I usually go with a uh, seven, a six, and I think a four as my as my third. Dinatra is by far one of the betters, especially if you're running a multi-ship swarm. Um, giving all your friendly ships within range 1 a plus 1 attack die. At the same time, she can also be a detriment because you have to keep all your ships grouped together, which means you're, you're prime target for things like mines or templates that uh, can affect multiple ships at a time. Uh, Toreth and her ability to turn hits into crits, always a good one. 
Um, I've liked Baldor. I've used him a lot in the past. He requires you to be behind your enemy, which um, we, with good use of sensor echo and maneuvering isn't that hard to do. Murok's a good choice. Uh, lets you basically as a free action repair hull or shield. This can be used to repair crits, which is very nice. Again, you're sacrificing captain skill for uh, uh, powerful abilities, but that's the way the Romulans work. Uh, the Romulans have a good variety of um, elite upgrades. Invasion plans is a one-use. I'm not a big fan of one-use ones, but it uh, you can discard it when you're attacking a enemy while you're cloaked, and it basically makes them roll less dice. Um, double back. Let you do a sensor echo and then a rear maneuver, or a backward maneuver. That one has its uses, uh, especially if you're putting it on a ship with like Valdor to make sure that you're outside of someone's fire arc. Um, decoy, makes your opponent roll three less attack dice for a round, which is nice, but it costs uh, itself and a weapon or tech upgrade, which I'm not too fond of. Um, all forward disruptor banks is an action, gets you plus one attack dice. Useful on some of the smaller ships where you can uh, boost up their attack, or even on the bigger ships if you just want to hit that much harder. Counterattacks, probably one of their most useful. Um, it gives you the uh, uh, ability yeah, as an action, if somebody shoots at you, you can return fire against them if they're in your front arc. Kind of situational, requires an action, but if you know you're going to be shot at anyway, why not? It gives you a chance to shoot back immediately after they fire against you, and then again on your attack phase. So, definitely nice. The only downside to this one is if you're blown up, you can't use it, unlike, uh, I think it was Riker has a very similar ability, and he can still shoot even if the ship's blowing up, because he does it as the ship's blowing up. But uh, the other nice thing about it is it's one of the few that isn't unique. Anything from the starter set or wave one, I think it was, is um, not unique, but all of the um, elite abilities that came after are. So it's kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind. Uh, Massacre is another interesting one. If you inflict a uh, critical on an enemy hull, you can discard this to inflict an extra, extra damage. How many times have you hit somebody and then left them with one hull left? So... Situational again, but definitely worth the points if you've ever been in that situation. Crew-wise, the Romulans have uh, several really good options. Burrell is a very good one, but again, can only be used on the science ship, which kind of limits her use. But uh, basically lets you counter an attack. Yeah, it never happened. Um, the officer can give you a uh, plus two attack dice. It costs you an action, and you can't uh, defend this turn. So, good if you're not in anyone's front fire arc and you know they're not going to be returning fire. He's worth worth it for the extra plus two dice. Selic makes it so people can't attack you that round. Centurion's the tactical officer. Against non-cloaking fleets, the Dominion, the Federation, tactical officers are great. Especially, like, against the Borg, the new threat. If you have a target lock in... in um, Normally you can spend the target lock to re-roll your dice. If you have a tactical officer on board, you can re-roll those dice twice. Definitely a nice card. Situational, um, not the greatest against other Romulan fleets, other Klingon fleets. Uh, things that cloak because the chances of you getting a target lock go way down. But against anything he can't cloak, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of your tactical officers. I ran multiples of them in the uh, OP events. Romulan Pilot's another good one. Uh, this came with the OP ship, uh, prize ship, and it uh, lets you discard it to give yourself a scan and then do an, uh, an extra green maneuver. So it gives you a little extra mobility, a little extra uh, maneuverability to get where you need to go, and you get that free scan. Uh, Nevek, he's one of the ones, he has his uses, but I don't see him getting a lot of use just because his ability gives you an extra attack die, but you have to disable a shield. 90% of the time with your Romulans, you're going to be attacking from Cloak, which means you're not going to have any shields active to disable. And this also takes your action for the turn, so has its uses. Um, that's the, the one downside a lot of the Romulan abilities. I think all of these ones in the back here require your ship either to be not cloaked or to disable shields, which you're just not going to do because you're going to be cloaked. At least you should be if you're doing it right.
Um, the only time I would uncloak an Romulan fleet is after you've taken some hull damage and you really can't risk taking more. Then you decloak to let the shield soak up some of those. Secondary weapon wise, you got your standard plasma torpedoes. Now there is a difference in plasma torpedoes. There's these 5.5 die ones. And let's see if I can find one of the other ones. I'm looking through the camera here, so. There's a bunch of different. There's a four or a 3.4 die one. And they go on, but the big difference is the ranges matter. I thought there was one more, but anyway, the ranges change, the damage changes, and I believe the special ability changes, which really make a difference, um, especially if you're putting them on the Galgathong to make use of the free plasma torpedo. So make sure you get the, the best plasma torpedo that you can uh, um, get for your, your points there, because there are different ones in there, and some of them even have, like these two even have, the same or almost the same picture on them so it's real easy to, to miss up, mess up and grab the wrong one. Additional weapons array. If you have a weapon slot on one of your smaller ships or you can give it a weapon slot through a, uh, a an upgrade or through maybe the flagship I don't know if the, the named one does. I think that one, one of the independent ones can but anyway these are amazing on some of your smaller science ships just to give it that little extra punch People won't expect a four die attack coming out of a ship with only one uh, one die, especially without requiring a target lock. Uh, nuclear warheads, another type of mine, has its uses. Um, Got to watch out; these ones can affect friendlies, which most mines can. But if you're playing uh, uh, Romulans, you're probably used to cloaked mines, which don't. Nuclear missiles, another one, not a great upgrade. Requires a target lock and everything for a three attack die. Let you reroll blanks, but honestly, if I was going that route, I think I would either take the plasma torpedoes or the uh, advanced weapons array there. Tech upgrades are kind of where the uh, Romulans shine. The sneaky guys have all the cool technology. Um, unit feedback wave is a really cool one, but can only be used on the science vessel. Uh, it's very similar to the energy dissipator from the Dominion. You hit somebody with it and their ships basically can't do anything. And uh, Interphase generator is a, uh, a really good one used by a lot of people. If you've got a tech slot for it in, in three points to spare, it is worth it. Uh, as long as you're cloaked, you can discard this. And no matter how much you damage you were hit for, it, you only take one. Uh, the downside is that comes after dice are rolled. So even if you rolled five of age, you're still going to take one. But against now when you, you got these ships out there with transphasic torpedoes or the Borg cutting beam that are doing 10 dice or more or things like uh, Barrage of Fire where you can be facing a lot of hits. Sure, I'll take one normal hit instead of 12 criticals. Quantum Singularities, not anything too spectacular. Uh, there's our big shining joy of the uh, Romulan Empire, the Cloaked Mines. If you're playing Romulans and you're not bringing at least one of these, you're doing something wrong. Uh, a couple places that I've gone to play have actually limited these to one, even though they're not unique, just because they are kind of powerful. Um, the drawback is you can't drop them directly on a ship. You actually have to drop them at least range two away from an enemy, so it gives them time to react. But eventually you get two or three of these down and there's no place for them to go. They're going to run into them. Uh, it's your standard minefield token and everything within range one of it. And they only affect enemy ships, which are, was what make these so broken. You can drop a whole field of these, and um, they're not going to hurt you one bit. And it really limits where your opponents can go without plowing through. Especially against a cloaked opponent who is going to be uh, taking hull damage from the mines if, unless they decide to uncloak. Polarized hull plating has its usefulness, especially on the larger ships like the Dideridex class where you've got six hull. It lets you convert uh, crit into a normal hit, so uh, less chance of taking multiple crits there. Uh, granted, it only works for one. It says you can convert one per attack, so if you get hit with multiple crits in an attack, you're still going to take some. But it lowers the chances of you taking uh, 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 criticals a lot. Ultridium Explosives. Um, I haven't used this one too much. It's more of a uh, situational thing. Requires you to be sitting around somewhere uncloaked with no shields. So it's good towards end game, And you basically beam explosives overboard. But it also costs you a chroman to use. For one crit. It eh, has its uses. Our Romulan flagship card. Uh, 
used this a lot in the last couple months of the OP once they were allowed. The free sensor echo is a godsend because you're going to be spending most of your time cloaked anyway. Or even if you take your action for the turn to cloak, you get that sensor echo for free. Uh, it really helps you with your positioning to get behind enemies and out of their fire arcs and whatnot so you can use your other abilities. Up here, the um, ability for ships with uh, friendly ships within range 1 to 2 of your flagship to be able to re-roll their attack dice. Uh, once I started taking this, I stopped taking my tactical officers because I wasn't bothering to get the target lock for the two re-rolls when I was getting one re-roll for free anyway. Uh, let me use my actions on other things. The extra weapon upgrade that it gives your ship is nice, as well as the stat bonuses. I'm not sure if the shield is all that spectacular, like I said, you spend most of your time cloaked, but it does help once you uh, take some damage and decide to decloak. And the uh, Romulan faction bases are these green ones. Really neat green. I think all the colored bases are pretty cool. Yeah, the camera does not want to focus on that, but... Yeah, all the colored bases are neat. The green ones are kind of kind of cool. They're... Overall, I really like the uh, Romulans myself. They only have a few really useful ships. Uh, most of the time, you're going to see yourself up against Valdors or Dideridex, some combination of those, uh, with one of the other ships as support. Uh, in very specialized uh, scenarios and whatnot, you may see multiple science ships carrying mines, Really depends, but I, I think 90% of the time you're going to find yourself up against the Deridex or Beldors with one of these other ships in support. Usually it's either going to be a Rizbo uh, for its amazing defensive capabilities or a Galgathong for its uh, ability to fire torpedoes without a lock. Those are what, those are what you're going to be, be seeing the most. Uh, I've seen a lot of people run the flagship on a Deridex with the Galgathong so that he can get free rerolls on that torpedo when it does fire it. Uh, it's a nasty little combo. Uh, a lot of times you're going to see Toreth on a one of the smaller ships escorting two of the bigger ships so that she can give her attack bonus to the two larger ships. Uh, the one thing I find a lot of people do with Romulans that I thought was kind of funny because I played them through all six months of the Dominion War is that it isn't always best to take the named versions. Now you get that one extra stat and the cool ability. Uh, the Valdor's ability is if you perform a green maneuver you get a plus one attack. Which is really nice. But then a lot of people are forced into the idea that every turn I have to take a green maneuver to get that plus one die. And then it makes you predictable. Your opponent knows what you're going to do because you're going to pull that green maneuver so you get that. Uh, the same with the other one. Plus one when uncloaking. Yeah, you're going to be firing from cloak most of the time. But... For the extra points and whatnot, I actually ran one month three generic Veldors with captains, and then we had Admiral Orders, which I used to grab uh, three tactical officers. And I took second place, because nobody was expecting. Everybody thought one of them was a name, they thought I'd have some weird strategy, and I didn't. It's, it, it was just pure uh, generics, and uh, they have that ability. Uh, Huge thing when playing Romulans, you're going to want to use your sensor echoes. Your best bet, because of your low captain skills, is going to be to stay out of your opponent's fire arc. And the best way to do that is to get where you need to be and then sensor echo to the side. Get yourself out of their fire arc, but keep them in your fire arc. Double back works good for helping with that, uh, to, to do your sensor echo and then drop back one or two to uh, definitely really confuse your enemy on where you're going to be. Make use of their blind spots. Make use of your cloaking device. They lack the pure in-your-face firepower of the Klingons, but they gain a little bit in defense. A lot of them have more hull than the Klingon ships at the cost of less attack. So you're going to want to use a little bit more strategy. These are for uh, Romulans are for a little bit more advanced player, I would say. Definitely maneuvering is a huge deal with them. Trying to keep yourself out of the fire arcs because with your lower captain skills, you aren't going to be shooting first most of the time, depending on what you're playing against. But yeah, stay out of enemy fire arcs, use uh, the cloaking devices as best you can, use your sensor echo as much as you can. I, I can't emphasize that one enough. I've seen people play Romulans and never sensor echo once, and that's like their main advantage to, to getting where they need to be. They, they do take a little bit more finesse because of their lack of, of straight up attack, but uh, there's enough combinations in there to give yourself some really mean attack. Um, 
I can't remember what it was. I, there was some big combo I ended up figuring out at one point to give a Valdor or a Kazara. I think it was a Kazara to give it something like a, a nine attack value for a turn. And yeah, it's brutal stuff. But um, and I think it involved uh, firing a torpedo with all forward disruptor banks uh, while within range of Torath, while cloaked. You know, some big combo, but it, yeah, it ended up being like eight or nine dice in an attack. So they do have the ability to pump out the damage. It just takes some really weird, complex combos to do it, which is what makes them a little bit, I'd say, a notch above Klingons in the skill department. But uh, definitely fun to play. I had a blast playing them. Like I said, I never took less than third in the tournament with them. Uh, probably going to move on to new things with the new releases that have been coming out, but Romulans uh, had my back for the Dominion War anyway. That's about it for them, though. I will uh, see you in the next video.